Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yeah, and Bridget, hello. And it's number 92. Yeah. And we're sitting um, at uh, the desk in our bedroom today, uh, and it feels quite cosy. We've got the angle poise lamp on. And I was thinking of the number of people who said to us how much it's like getting together with friends when they listen to what we're rambling on about. Mm -hmm. But it's lovely to think of that. So thank you it for really telling is. us that. It such is. A, such a good feeling um, it's because it's just a little time to be together and pull back a bit. So I'm, I'm really glad about that. It is. And, and I think... Um, I think that applies to hearing from people as well, don't you? It feels like friends who some of whom we've never met and maybe we'll never meet, but but just chatting a bit. One of the things that struck me this week is there were certainly two, I think maybe three emails. Um, you know, we mentioned last week about how you give the smile of God to people and, and how you receive the smile of God and mm. and both of these people talked about the fact that they have their only real experience of feeling the love of God is through other people and one of them said something that I thought was very interesting Adrian it almost feels like the past when you talk about the pandemic but she was saying that that with poor health and with the lockdowns, she lost touch with people and somehow lost touch with God for a while as well. And she said so many people have been affected as this pandemic has torn people apart. Yeah. And I thought if ever there's an expression that sums up what's happening in Ukraine, I mean, we talk about it being war torn, mm. don't we? And there is a tearing a tearing at this country at everything that it is and I don't know so very much about what it is Ukraine I've never been there but that sense of tearing I'm apart. sure the aim of it is to tear the culture the the feeling of safety the feeling that that's where you belong um, yeah it's it's a, and it's a, it um, also shreds your mind I mean uh, m last night my mind was full of guns and mm. m particularly elderly people's faces mm. Mm. as they look so bewildered and mm. wondered what on earth was mm. going to happen to them mm. and to their families and we, we've all been feeling it I know that oh but it, gosh all it over is, the world it is horrible yeah um, and um, talking about things being torn mm. I was thinking we went to uh, Zambia didn't we in Africa and back in was it 2000 and <laughs> Don't uh, ask me which date it was. And something. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but the idea of it was that we would look at work being done in Zambia towards helping with AIDS because AIDS was 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 a very difficult problem there. Then I think Uganda had just started to get a a grip on that mm. and moving mm. forward a bit. Mm. And we went to Zambia just really to to look and see what was happening, in particular, in one one uh, village. Uh, called Zamtan well and time. come back yeah. and write about it come and talk and about it, yeah. it and uh, but the, yeah and it was there wasn't it that it somebody the, said yeah, somebody said the problem with AIDS in Africa apart from the obvious ones is that it is tearing apart the fabric of African mm. culture because mm. because parents were dying grandparents and children were having to come together mm. some of them were dying mm. and the the whole centuries old way of being as mm. families and mm. as as communities mm. was falling apart mm. um, yeah and I, I i i've never forgotten that expression adrian i think partly because of the the word fabric because when you think of africa i mean when i think of uh bangladesh where we went i think of the saris the delicacy the the attempt to to somehow be colorful despite the fact you live in a terrible slum yeah. in africa the vibrancy of the fabric the the colors the flowers the the zing of mm. the fabric all of that being just torn as you say but yeah. some of the projects were they actually had utilized that appetite for color and dance and music yeah and other things that were very much part of what people did and loved, yeah. and it was very it was very rewarding to watch. Mm. Um, although the problem was so huge, mm. as usually we felt, what what are we doing here? Mm. 
And then we had to say to ourselves, you are doing what you're doing. You do yeah. your little bit. And then you, we took we took a few bits up for Ukraine a, a mm. couple of days ago to, to mm. add to a, some stuff people were collecting. We thought, we've, we've contributed such a tiny amount. Mm. Mm. But then if everybody mm. um, contributes a tiny amount, it's not bad, is it? No, I, I think... I think it's interesting you saying about the dance and the and the drama and, and various other things that are were being uh, were being put in fairly deliberately to to hang on to that creativity in the centre of people. Yeah. Having seen the bravery and resilience and extraordinary sacrifice being made in Ukraine at the moment, and then again in Poland. I mean, it's all very well, isn't it? Sort of thinking how sweet it is of people to open their homes there is a cost involved in that there is an adaptation involved in that and the fact that people don't speak the same language it's is going to be going. pretty tricky it's <laughs> all right don't worry go on so well i i think that's what i was going to say really <laughs> that that i think that somehow that 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 trait of resilience Mm. won't be completely torn completely snuffed out mm. i don't know i feel i must say i feel just recently that the, the the fabric of life as i have allowed it to be okay i don't know what that means is kind of tearing and the the fabric of relationship with god is not doing that exactly but I certainly am having to look at what it actually means mm. and what is true and what is unterrible. Mm, mm, and mm. a couple of things struck me. One was, you know, at the end of the communion service in uh, the Anglican Church, we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm. And I think a lot of people are kind of saying the words but hearing in their heads, go in pieces to resent oh, and let down no. the Lord. And because... <laughs> You can feel such a failure mm. when the things you usually did and the things mm. that you that made you feel strong are not there, mm. and you're reaching your hands out like a child in the dark to God to say, mm. "Can you just come and be a bit more real with me, a bit closer to me, mm. because I can't handle this." Mm. But the other thing that struck me was was this is going to sound a little odd is about your dressing gown. I just just. <laughs> No, just tell, no, tell people oh, I know what you're about, about your grey dressing gown <laughs> and our dog and how they fit together. Okay. Then, well, I'll, it... then I'll tell you why I, I thought of it. Well, I have no idea what you're going to say, but um, when I, yeah, all that time ago when I broke my ankle, my daughter rushed into one of the very cheap places and bought this dressing gown for me to have in in uh, hospital and it was a a large gray fluffy thing she said the only alternative was so awful that she thought this was better very warm though, it was it? very very warm and mm. um and and our dog who was only a tiny puppy at the time from the very day i came home with this dressing gown just loved this dressing gown I don't know what you're going to say, but she still does. She still does. And it's because I put it over her cage at night and she pulls it into the cage and sort of chews bits of it. Mm. It's the most ragged, horrendous, what torn piece say, of fabric. Really? What well, were you going you, to say? Well, if you lift this up and hold it up and you said, look, here's something valuable, <laughs> people would laugh and they'd say, well, it, it might have been at one time. But actually... It still is the case that when you get up in the morning in, with the dog, yes, um, there's a routine, isn't there? Ah, little she ritual. goes out down for the toilet, and you, and then you give her a treat, and you have a cup of tea. Then you <laughs> put the put the dressing gown next to you. Yes, I and, do. And, all and right. The do dog crawls under the she does, dressing gown and snuggles and up to me. But she doesn't only do that with you, and it doesn't always do it with me. But sometimes I know that's what she wants. Mm. And you bring it up and she bur burrows her head under it. And I've taken a certain comfort in that thought that the, the thing you are left with is not necessarily very wonderful looking. No. And it might be full of holes, mm. but it still, still is something that brings warmth mm. and can mm. kind of cuddle you with, it, mm. with its, its familiarity. Mm. 
And uh, it reminds me, it reminded me a little bit of someone I knew ages ago who lost all his belief in God, all his things that he thought he knew, and ended up realising that the actual encounters with God he'd had over the years were very warm. Mm. And once he got those bits together, mm. that that scrappy mm. piece of material that he was able to accumulate mm. really meant a lot to him. Mm. So we've, we've got to be very careful um, that we don't, I was going to say throw out the baby with the bathwater, but that's what, one of the cliches of cliches, isn't it? But <laughs> but not to, not to get rid of the things that really are wonderful mm. um, that mm. we we still have mm. within us. Mm. Mm. Yes, I yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Just fragments, maybe, that one can sort of hang on to. You know, like um, I was thinking of babies with their comfort blankets that become torn and worn and thin mm. and grubby but that's the one and if you try and replace it with a nice shiny off the peg well you wouldn't have it off a peg if it's a blanket but you know what i mean yeah. the baby doesn't want it it's because a metaphor what it needs... bridget off the peg anyway go on well, yeah <laughs> but i mean you know, uh, yeah, I know um that's not what they want they no, want their no. they want the thing that is familiar yeah and that, of course, is going to be so unbelievably tough for these people torn away from their country. Mm. Very little, you know, watching them. I mean, a lot of dogs have made the journey. I know a lot haven't, but a lot of dogs have made it in baskets and various things. Yeah, you see and, them on uh, television, don't you? Yeah and, yeah, and people taking their very essentials, you know, mm. maybe a toy for a child, maybe a... Yeah. And, and having to leave everything... But those little bits will have huge significance, won't mm. they? Yeah. The one toy, the the thing, the the whatever it is they've brought, um, mm. yeah. and they will be symbols of so much more, really. Yeah. I think it's worth looking back, and I know, I don't think I know there are people listening who feel very far from God at the moment, and very unsure. Oh. But I I've, I've tried to look back and think of little moments when something happened that warmed me through and mm. when I go back and think about them it, it kind of does the same and some of them are so small uh, I, I remember for instance at, at the end of speaking for half an evening and the interval came and a, an elderly lady on two sticks came hauling herself up the center aisle and mm. um, pulling her body along i mean you're obviously in a terrible mm. state but with this big smile on her face and was so nice to me so lovely to me giving me what she had that was the most valuable thing which was mm. uh affirmation and a sort of love and i remember thinking then it's very kind of god to give me that Mm. that just at the moment and we, we've mm. we've all had those moments well yeah. and we're going to need them aren't we because our security you know we've i mean let's be honest living in the uk and i know we have one or two people who listen to us in sweden and australia it's all pretty secure really isn't it and our security is pretty threatened i think just just the fact of uh, the cost of petrol today spiraling out of control it feels as though everything is 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 scary and out of control mm. and um yeah it leaves you wondering what to pray for how to how to cope with it in your mind and i think like you say adrian hanging on to those fragments the you know that we haven't got our nice big comfort blanket round us of mm. of knowing that we're an island and we you know mm. we don't get occupied and all the other things i think uh we're seeing something happening in front of our eyes that 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 takes us somewhere so so so, so fragile really. well i'm i'm finding it really taxing actually and yeah. uh we keep saying but then that's nothing for us we're safe and everything but another, another two things that did occur to me was what really matters, you know, in the end. Um, and I was thinking, I think a while ago we, we asked a question, 
What kind of safety do you want? I mean, whether you regard it as the bad news or the good news for those who are followers of Jesus, Christians, um, the kind of safety we are offered and can have is not protection from bombs and difficulties and awful stuff happening. It's a completely different kind of, of safety. It's a safety of something right inside us. And the other thing which is connected with that is I just thought about um, the currency of heaven, the currency of heaven, which is, or well, Jesus says it is, so it probably is, because he seemed to know these things, didn't he? <laughs> well, I think he had reason to know things, really. The currency of heaven, the thing you can spend in heaven, mm -hmm. is the love you passed on in this world. Yeah. Now, I, d I don't want to go into, you know, <coughs> is, that any qu is there a bank there? No, I know nothing about that. I just know he said... Don't, don't store up treasures in heaven. Uh, no, do store don't, up don't store up treasures, treasures on, on earth. earth. A tre store up treasures in in heaven. Mm. And there are probably people you can help, you can look after, you can mm. do things for. Mm. And those are really, really valuable things. Mm. And mm. they might prove to be difficult, mm. probably not dangerous mm. in Mil Milton Keynes or wherever it is you live well, someone's going to now write to us and say Milton Keynes <laughs> is the most dangerous place in England <laughs> but uh, I, I do think those fundamental issues are mm. important mm. Um, and the, the the other thing if you'll excuse me mothering or mithering on is the tenderness of God keeps striking me I don't know how it works out in, in Ukraine I'm sure a lot of people there are thinking well I, I wouldn't mind half a bucket of that if I could have it but I I believe in it I believe in it. I believe in the tenderness of God. I don't know how it works itself out. I've felt it sometimes. I've missed it sometimes. Mm. I've yearned for it sometimes. Mm. And I think in the end that's going to be the thing we most mm. treasure, really. Yeah. And I, I suppose if we are joining the world in praying for these unbelievably... Oh, uh, hurt and hurting people we can pray that they don't feel torn away from God mm. torn away from the people who've loved them torn away and just I don't know how we pray but as you say it must be breaking God's heart this is evil mm. and uh and I think we can take all of our pain and all of our hurt and confusion about this to God mm. without having a, a determined expectation on how things will resolve or whatever. Mm. And as you say, pray for that inner safety for people. Yeah. That somehow the Holy Spirit will get in there and give people a sense of safety yeah. and 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 peace this extraordinary peace i don't mm. know how it can possibly happen but in every bit of help that is going out there and every mm. person who greets with with open eyes and arms that that somehow people remain connected to god or begin yeah. to be connected i have to say though that that i absolutely agree with that i mean that's what we've both been saying but there have been once or twice lately where I've said to God, now look, you know, Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, I've got all these legions of angels I could call on yeah, we immediately. Could do yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what about, uh, what about a few of those legions appearing in Ukraine? And maybe they will. And maybe they will. I, uh, maybe, maybe they won't. I don't know. But I, I'm trying to remain as open as I can about mm -hmm. what the possibility mm -hmm. of solution is in this mm. situation and I, at the moment i find it really really hard to think about anything else i mean f obviously the, uh, family at the moment you don't want your own family torn apart so that's crucially important mm. for people to stay mm. with their feet on the ground mm. but we don't know and it's no good pretending that we do so we could finish by saying a prayer for you ukraine this couldn't time. we yeah of course God, you are a father to some and not to others. They don't know you by that name and they don't understand it. And I know um, there is in you a d deep desire and hope that they'll come trudging up the rope one day and say, I've come home. Yes. Because 
that's what you want I know it is what you want I don't know why you don't do the things that we think would be a jolly good idea but I do know that there has always been all through the history of this faith a plan there has been a plan and the plan it has argument and criticism and all lots of other things ricocheting it off it because it isn't what people want so what I want to ask you for is that whatever it is you're planning whether it's legions or angel, of angels or someone giving a piece of bread and a drink to somebody that uh, it will be fulfilled your plans will be fulfilled whatever it is you you set up and that those of us who are followers friends of yours we will do everything we possibly can practically to be part of making your dreams come true as far as this dreadful dreadful situation is concerned but thank you that we we do have some scrappy old bits and pieces to hold together and say this still warms us sometimes so thank you for that for your love in the past and for your love now even if we don't feel it sometimes thank you in jesus name amen amen and we'll talk to you next week and yeah. hope to hear from you this was number 92 by the way i think you said oh that did i at say the it? Beginning. <laughs> all right okay <laughs> bye bye, bye, -bye.